All right, 10.3 is going to have us actually begin to evaluate some of these log um, values. And we are going to get some formulas. So if you notice, at quick glance, I've flip-flopped the first two sections of your notes because I'm going to start with the properties. I'm going to give you the formulas. So these are things you should obviously put in your cheat sheet. If you have a log, and inside the log is a product, things being multiplied, you can simplify that by taking the log of each part and adding them. Now that comes in handy if one part is a variable and one part isn't. If you had like 5a, for example, if you had the log base 2 of 5a, you could simplify it as log base 2 of 5 plus log base 2 of a. And then find a value for log base 2 of 5 and potentially move forward in simplifying. If I'm dividing inside, then what happens is I subtract. So I have log base a of the numerator minus the log, whatever the base is, of the denominator, but it's always the numerator first. If I have a log that has a power inside of it, that power comes out front as a coefficient. That's how you simplify it. So to look at an example there, example, if you have log base 10 of 5x, I can take that x out front and write x log base 10 of 5. Now that x is an actual number, it's a coefficient, and I can divide by log base 10 of 5 and solve for x. If you are faced with a sum inside of a log, notice the parentheses, that's key, you can't simplify or apply a rule or anything. You have to work that sum before you can take a log. Okay, so that one you are stuck. So then when we go to look at this list, which one of these appropriately follows the rule? Well, if I have a product, it's not multiplied, it's added. So this one is no, and this one does appropriately follow. Now just as a side note, if there's no little number down here for the log, that is saying log base 10 because that's the most common. It's kind of like when we take the square root and we don't write that index number 2, we all know it's square root. If it just says log, it's base 10. So let's go over here and look at these two division problems. If I divide, the rule says not to divide but to subtract. So this one is no and this one is yes. If I'm looking at a sum, if you remember the rule, we can't do a sum. If I'm looking at a power inside or a power inside, the correct application of the rule is not to keep it as a power, but to bring it out as a coefficient. Subtraction is going to be the same as an addition, which is no, we cannot do. Now, we have two strategies we are going to use. So this is strategy one. I'll move everything down here a little bit. All right. Strategy one. If all the terms do not have logs, so when I look here, I have a log, a log, no log. Okay, so that's when this rule applies. Log, log, no log. We want to put it back to a single log, then do exponential form. So strategy one is rewrite it as a single log using those rules, then use exponential form, then solve. So what does that look like? Well, in this case, I have log base 2, log base 2 added. Well, the rule for adding means that that came from 
a multiplication problem. So I can write log base 2 of x times x plus 2, and that equals 3. So I took this rule that said log of uv becomes log of u plus log of v, and I worked it this way. I saw a sum, and I wrote it back as a product. Now when I'm in this form, then we go ahead, that was step one, now I'm going to write it in exponential form, and remember exponential form, here's my base, this is my exponent, equals the answer. Now that is a very simple problem to solve. Distributive property, if I have x squared and x, I need to go ahead and get it equal to zero. That is a simple factoring problem. Once I've factored, remember zero product property, each part equals zero. Solve each baby problem. Now check your answers. You can get those extraneous solutions, those things that can't be answered, can't be answers, and if you remember, x can never be negative in log situations, so that one is not a solution, and our only answer is 2. Let's go back and try another one. Similar situation, we have the same base added, which means it came from a multiplication problem. So I can rewrite this left side as a log base 2 of x times x minus 6. That's still equal to 4. Once I have it as a single log, it rewrites nicely in exponential form. 2 to the 4th base to the exponent is equal to the answer. And now I have an Algebra 1 problem to distribute, subtract 16. What factors of 16 are going to combine under plus minus to make negative 6? Well, that's clearly 8 and 2. So that means that x plus 2 equals 0, or x minus 8 equals 0. x is negative 2 x is 8, but I remember my x can never be negative in logarithm problems, and so my only answer is 8. Now that factoring and solving part is all review. You have seen that three to four times in your mathematical career, so that part should be the easy part of this. Now the next strategy is one we're going to use if we already have things in logs. Okay, strategy two. So if we already have everything in log, log of this equals log of this equals log of this, we're still going to reduce to a single log. Okay, so we're still going to go down to a single log and then we can drop the logs. Because remember that rule, if we have the log of a of x is equal to the log base a of 5, that x was equal to 5 because this base and this base were the same, so we could drop them and write the equation. So that's the strategy we're going to use. So rewrite as a single log, drop the logs, then solve. So what do we have going on here? This side is already a single log, so we're good. Log base 4 of 3x plus 2. This side is a plus, which means it came from multiplication. So that means that this side was log base 4 of 5 times 3 before I split it. These are both log base 4 which means that this part 
and this part are equal to each other. So I can write 3x plus 2 is equal to 15, and that is a very simple problem to solve. Fractions are fine as long as it's positive, and you're done. Now in the next example, I have a couple of things going on over here. So the first thing I need to look at is this log. This 4 out here was an exponent. So my first step is to write log base 2 of x to the 4th minus log base 2 of 5 equals log base 2 of 125. Then subtraction came from a division problem. And so I can go ahead and write this as the log base 2 of x to the 4th divided by 5, check your rules, is equal to the log base 2 of 125. These are both log base 2, so I can drop them off. And what I'm left with is x to the 4th over 5 is equal to 125. I'm dividing by 5, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 5. I'm not actually going to do the multiplication. I'm going to save myself some work. How do I undo the 4th power? Well, I take the 4th root of both sides. Remember, plus or minus on positive roots. I know that 25 is 5 times 25, which is 5 times 5. So I know I can write this as plus or minus the fourth root of 5 to the fourth. So I have x is equal to plus or minus 5. x can never be negative, so my only answer is x is 5. Again, that taking the fourth root, factoring to find the fourth root of 5 to the fourth being 5, is review from earlier sections. Tune in to part 2 for this last section on some substituting and evaluating rules.